What's up, guys? It's Sam and Taylor. And we want you to put your shoes on, pop open that energy drink, and go. Okay. Well, do you want me to start? I don't care. No, it's fine. I just didn't know if like you had anything to like cover before we started. No, I'm ready to go. Okay. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to another episode. I am Sam. And I am Taylor. I want to do some like, you know, housekeeping things right off the bat. One, we're launching a fitness app. Hell yeah. If you didn't know that, I did a little poll on my story today. I was like, did you know that we're launching a fitness app? And like, I'm going to check what it's at right now. It wasn't a lot of you already knew. So I'm not saying you guys didn't know because a lot of you did, but some people just don't keep up 103 people said did not know didn't know damn well maybe they don't now, listen to the podcast too 400 so people did know yeah that's good so you guys are with it but for you might be number 104 who's like wait i didn't know now you do fitness uncensored app you can find it on any of our profiles on the podcast profile you can find it it'll be super easy quick to get to um so yeah if you're number 104 that also didn't know now you know and now you're aware um also merch is still for sale you can still buy merch shipped in package by yours truly yes and yeah but guys <laughs> i you i need to just let you know right now how excited i have been to catch up with you guys all week like yes. this weekend like there is something in particular that we will get into that like rubbed me the wrong way and i've been itching to tell you guys because can you guys we- are gonna find this hilarious um i think this is really funny um um, this is going to be a good episode for you guys because this catch up is going to be us being our hilarious, wonderful selves. But then we're going to get into some really educational, valuable info. 100%. So it's a really good mix of both. Make sure to stick around for the interview with Beth. But listen to like, I'm just going to read you guys these notes so you guys can like be like, wait, what? Because it's funny. This is what it says. Moving to Offland is weird. Heavy period blood through my shorts. Nail salon. And then someone's name. <laughs> that, that's my <laughs> okay that's my notes here's another thing episode. do you guys ever which i'm like asking you this as if you're gonna answer right away but is there ever somebody in particular that really pisses you off one week and then anything that pisses you off you refer to it as their name like mm-hmm. let's say they're a, Rebe- a rebecca sorry rebecca's listening out there but like i'll like yell at the fridge because our fridge like screams and like beeps and i'm like Rebecca, shut our, the fuck up. Our fridge screams. It's like, ah! No, our <laughs> fridge, like, makes this beepy sound. So, like, anything that, like, pisses you off in the slightest, you just, like, refer to it as that person's name. Yeah. I do it all the time. Like, if it- Yeah, so we can just go right into that Um, because we're already talking about yeah. it. So we can start there. It was last on my list, but, but basically, we'll start there. Yeah, guys, we're getting canceled again. No. <laughs> I have never, guys, like, to be such a catty female is so just like icky like like everyone talks about like what gives you the ick like what gives you the girl ick like the friendship ick because i i hardly ever meet people where right off the bat i'm like oh (laughs) i need to get away from you i need to get out (laughs) no and because you know normally it's like even if it's not the best interaction you give people the benefit of the doubt it's one time you know you feel it out but it was like eh, nope yeah nope <laughs> some background context for you guys so basically we have a friend in our friend group a guy and he has an ex-girlfriend and they did for four years and we literally have never seen her in our entire life all the way up until this past weekend and she made an entrance she made an entrance <laughs> and i've always wondered like why haven't we seen her around she's part of the friend group like what the heck Anyways, now I know why. But um, <laughs> so we had been at the bars, ho- bar hopping, and we ended up being at the same bar as her at one point. And one of our mutual friends was like, oh, my goodness, like, I want to introduce you to her. So obviously we're like, OK, like we're going to give this girl like keep in mind, we have no like bad blood yeah. toward this girl until after the, the interaction. Because this was our mindset the whole time. These people are both adults. Like, I'm not going to like hate your ex just because it's your ex and you should be able to be in the same room like you know what i mean like we're adults like there was no like um bad like we weren't going into it with like a oh we don't like her because that's our friend's ex it was like we're we're adults but taylor and i well we haven't really we weren't drinking so this is another like thing so she was obviously drunk we weren't drunk (laughs) i had one drink right because we were no no i'm I'm just saying i'm just saying like my in like my like reading a person sober is much better than reading a person mm-hmm. when you're drunk mm-hmm. so we're just kind of standing there and i was actually doing like a um something with somebody else and she goes okay like let me introduce 
my friend. So the girl comes over and she goes, hi, nice to meet you. My name's so-and-so. She goes, this guy, like, I don't want to say our friend's name, but. Let's call them Stephanie and Jared. Okay. Jared's my ex. Jared treated me like shit our entire relationship. And that's the first thing she said to us. And I'm like, whoa, okay. Mm. Like, calm down. Like, I did not ask. And I felt like she was just about to literally, like, unwind her entire, like, four-year relationship (laughs) onto me. And I just feel like that's not something you do when you know blatant day that I'm really good friends with your ex-boyfriend. You know? Yeah, it was just, it's very weird to come on initially talking crap about someone's friend to a person, to their face. Very odd. Now, this was a very quick conversation, very packed bar. I'm talking like shoulder to shoulder packed bar because football games were on. It was crazy in there, you know, loud. So it wasn't like this long, drawn out conversation. And like we we leave it right. We're like, didn't really I didn't like know that. what to say. I was yeah. like, we're I like, really didn't, didn't know what really to say. like that. Like just like weird. And then we find out through the through the grapevine. That we were apparently mean to her. Yeah, we were mean to her and that she wants to quote unquote ruin us on the internet. <laughs> what? She heard we were influencers and wants to ruin us. And when she's the one that came up to us talking shit about somebody else. I'm like, we're, make it make sense. You know, this, this is where it bothered me is like because we have a fall, like a, a platform with a bunch of people on it. People just think that they can automatically assume or like make this assumption about us Mm -hmm. and it's just not true and then they think they can just cancel us it all comes back to what i was saying on last podcast episode about like it's worried if people are gonna think your man's gonna see us i know it's hard it's hard for girls it's crazy but i don't know (laughs) just don't guys this is my thing don't be that crazy ex i when i broke up with both my ex-boyfriends i wanted to be able to be in the same room as them no drama like move on type of situation and that's just not happening with this relationship and you know somehow we get dragged into it and i yeah, don't even know where i'm sick of getting dragged into everyone's business but now it is our business and i'm talking about it on my podcast so. i know i thought it was the funniest thing when she said quote unquote she wants to ruin us on the internet like, what so okay i'm glad we're putting it out here first because that's what's really happened so if you see a random girl on the internet <laughs> saying that we did something to she's her she's not going to well i mean i wouldn't put it pa- that was a we- i wouldn't put it past it <laughs> but like that was if you see any of that happen you heard it you heard it here first folks what really happened was a 10 second conversation where we didn't know what to say because she was just shitting on her friends so yeah ah <laughs> oh, fuck i'm the i'm the rude one so rude <laughs> should have sh- yeah because it's a lose lose, then what? Then we talk shit, then our other friend doesn't like us. Yeah, I know. So where do you win? We don't win. Nope. We're never in the winning situation. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so back to my list. My main <laughs> big point on this list that just had us like laughing. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like that TikTok that's like, I don't judge, but I will judge you if you move to Houston just to go to Alpha Land. Yeah, okay. The reason <laughs> I we had this conversation like before the podcast and that's why we put it down but the reason i like we were got into the conversation because i saw some guys tiktok and he was basically saying that like alpha land is becoming so oversaturated with so many people moving there and everyone is trying to be the same person and it's like how are you gonna grow as a person or even a content creator on social media if you are in the same exact place as so many other people just trying to fit in like someone's gonna like you better and like fuck with your content better if you're like doing fitness and you're maybe a nurse on on the side like and they see that you're hustling and all that stuff not like dropping everything and moving across the country to go to alpha land and i know um the texas like haters are gonna be like well you guys moved to austin everyone's moving to austin that wasn't like a content thing yeah like i had a full-time job when i moved here that wasn't a content thing like at all um I literally would have moved. And like, if you were in another city, I probably would have went with you yeah. wherever, honestly. But um, anyways, I know people are going to be like, you also moved to Texas. It wasn't for content, like really. Um, but the thing with the moving to Alphaland to me, one, Houston, there's nothing else <laughs> to really do near Alphaland. Yeah. Unless I don't know the area well enough. Yeah. So I'm also like, what are you guys doing there all the time? There's not much to do. And I, to- I agree with what you're saying. Everyone's sponsored by the same company. So you're all wearing the same outfits. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you walk in, there's 50 people wearing like, 
you know, same thing because they they work with very similar companies. Yeah. There's, there's a few companies that kind of run the fitness industry. Yeah. Um, and then it's like they have the same. Everyone has their hydro drug and everyone has this gym bag. And it's like, yeah, we have that stuff, too. But when you're just in a room with ev- your it's like clones and like everyone's the same. It's like bizarre. Yeah. Like if you right now are kind of debating, because I know there's definitely a lot of you debating, you want to just after college or even right now, where whatever place in your life you're at, you want to move and send it to Alpha Land. I say don't do it. Go I somewhere. Don't do it too. Either go somewhere random, stay where you are, and be that only person that's really focusing on like content creation at your gym like we an example we had was just like the middle of nowhere and like a farm town like if you are the only person really focusing on that everyone in your area is probably going to be following you and relating with your content because they are living kind of the same lifestyle but then immediately when you move to alpha land no one can really relate to you anymore because they it's not the same lifestyle and that's where like if you want to grow on social media which i hate having these conversations because it's it's not that overcomplicated but you need to be relatable yeah and um this i think people go also for the sake of like meeting like-minded people but really it's not really meeting like-minded people who are so into the gym it's meeting like-minded people who all want to be famous on social media which is like a very toxic place to be yeah is to be like always in a room with like that's your shared interest is like growing on social media. Obviously everyone likes fitness, but it's different because shared interests are so many different reasons. Someone might like fitness or so many different ways of working out. So liking fitness doesn't mean everyone relates yeah. automatically. That's- There's so many different like sub sub subsets of it. So literally the only thing really like immediately that you have in common with everyone moving there is you, you want in like clout on Instagram for yeah. being a fitness person. And it really gets toxic being surrounded only by people who do that like i mean the trips are overwhelming because it's a lot of cameras it's a lot it's on 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 all the time you have to look your best because everyone's filming and Mm -hmm. everyone wants to be in this video being that video and i mean i couldn't live like that yeah it's a lot that's definitely something we learned at the very beginning um that we kind of had to express to you guys is that just because we're all fitness creators doesn't mean we're all gonna get along and be best friends like you're going to see me do content with someone maybe once. And then maybe we just didn't vibe then. Like we weren't friends all outside of the camera. Like we didn't have the same interests. We weren't the same type of people. So we didn't vibe off camera. So you're probably not going to see me maybe do content with them again. And then, then there's this whole thing like, oh my God, why aren't you friends with this person again? And I'm like, well, I was never actually like friends with them. So you just I was just, I, I met them and I made maybe one or two TikToks with them. Yeah. So that's the, another thing to keep in mind. Um, And then, I think just like overall, the reason I really like is weird. Um, Alpha Land is a super cool gym. I'm not saying like don't go visit. Super cool. I love Alpha Highly Land. recommend going on like a weekday if you can um, get around, not going on a weekend. Beautiful gym, beautiful facility, cool staff, awfully close, dope. Nothing against it at all. I think the like obs- <laughs> obsession like bow down to Alpha Land. Well, think about like it. It's bizarre. only been open. It's only been open for nine months. So and I like guess it maybe will die down at some down, point. Down. Die down. That's the other thing. Well, now you live there. Yeah. Like the hype dies down and you're in a year lease. So, yeah. So you have to say, so I think it's just interesting. I think we should do a, like, there should be a documentary. Yeah. I on like, fitness no, no, wait, I, I don't know if anyone follows Christian, but someone actually reached out to him about doing a documentary of Alpha land and he posted the, the email on his Snapchat or on his Instagram story. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, it's just bizarre to me. It's bizarre. Yeah. People that man here, is like, set for life. People like, He's insane. I would love to get like, him on the podcast and talk about all oh, that Oh, yeah. That'd be stuff. crazy. Um, but yeah. Um, let's go. Let's w- work our way into birth control. I put it on my little page. Birth control deathbed. Because that's how I felt all week. <laughs> yeah. So um, the week prior, um, I'd been a little sick. I was kind of ill. And I feel like people thought I was being dramatic. I was like, oh, I thought you were being dramatic. Yeah, I was like, I don't feel good. I was like, just stand up, drink some water. Water fixes everything. <laughs> he was like, I've had to be like, are you dehydrated? I'm like, I don't know, but I feel like shit. <laughs> and we were going on the plane and I was like, bro, I'm so nauseous. And you're like, maybe you're anxious. So I was like, no. I was like, I'm going to throw up. Like I ran out. I was like, I'm, I, I literally was like, I don't think I can get on this plane because like, what if I like puke on the person next to me? <laughs> like, I really don't know if I can do this. I was 
ill for like a day not as down bad as you but then it hit you like a motherfucking truck <laughs> it did hit me like a truck and you know what i already talked about this on my youtube and a little bit on my instagram story but i had n- like no idea like in the moment i felt like shit and i just thought uh, i don't know maybe i'm like a weird hungover but i don't know what's going on then i reflected a few days after and it was like a mix of like anxiety the nausea from my period cramps and all of that and I was so down bad <laughs> on Sunday. I think I stood up for maybe 20 minutes throughout the entire day. She slept like, the entire total. day. I went from couch to bed, couch to bed, taking different naps. And oh my goodness, my neck is so sore because of the way I was sleeping on the couch. But yeah, no, it was really bad. And today is actually Thursday. So this happened on Sunday, right? Yeah. Sunday. Now it's Thursday and I got my period. So we got through it. And hopefully this period is not that bad and we'll see what happens next month. Yeah, um, I'm actually off my period right now. I've been tracking on the Flow app because that's oh, I have the to one. document mine. Yeah, document. Sam, Sam said this one she had. And then I realized I actually had this app before because it had like information from like two years ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've used this before. Um, But it's so cool actually having like real cycles obviously they're not perfect yet there's probably still a hormone like imbalance obviously but it being like you'll probably feel like this and i'm like i do i do feel more energetic i do feel like i can do more work i do like you probably be in a better mood like and i'm like wow you're right you're right little app you're correct like you're literally correct i've been trying to log all my symptoms um so that way it can give me the best um understanding of what's going on But on my period, what I wrote down was heavy period blood through my shorts. The first two days of my period, first day the most, it was like so much blood, okay? I literally looked down and there was just like red on my legs in the gym. I was wearing black shorts and we were leaving, so I was good to go because I was just getting in the car and going home. But it was a lot and it lasted about five days and now we're done. Yeah, I'm hoping mine's only like four to five days, I don't know. But I just looked at the app. It said I um, didn't have my period for 31 days. So that's like average. But I know obviously like I'm still kind of like got the birth control in my system. So I'm not fully off and I'm not, you know, but I'm just documenting my journey. Yeah, documenting everything. So you guys, if you're debating it, you know, like from day one, obviously um, it's not going to be the same. We pretty much had pretty much the same experience. But a lot of other people, like I got comments being like, I've been off of it and I still haven't gotten it for three months. Should I be worried? And I'm like, okay, one, maybe ask a doctor if yeah, you're worried. Don't, have, don't, I don't come know. to us with like your birth control And two, questions. so many people are so different. Like I've got comments being like, for the first year, I didn't have a period. For six months, I didn't yeah. have a period. Or they got a period and it like never stopped. Like literally like um, so many things. So if you're genuinely concerned, go talk to a doctor. But this is just like literally what's going on. So all I can share is what's happening to me. That's facts. Facts. Um, and we have an episode with a hormonal um, nutritionist, so you can go listen to that. <clears throat> I also wrote down nail salon. <laughs> Guys, we were in the nail salon for so long. I hate the nail salon. I don't like it either. And you know what? I've come to realize that I just, I need to be less, like I just, going into the fall, I'm not going to be so uptight with my nails. We They're going to be simple. We need to go to like an individual nail tech yeah that too i can do pedicures at nail salons because pedicures i read my book i get a foot massage turn on the back massager i'm like relaxed you should you i should see my pinky right now it is so long and this finger is really long yeah she's like like, short almond and i look over this girl has claws claws on my hand (laughs) and i go can we go shorter and he gives me like the dirty look he's wearing a mask too so like i can tell he's giving me the dirtiest look ever but he's trying to hide it because he's wearing a mask i'm like no 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 like please go shorter and he goes no no no, we can't i'm like but why like i know we can (laughs) why please like i am going to go to the gym and one they're either gonna break or two my nails are gonna be digging into my like palms when i'm trying to grab a, a plate or just anything because when i bench i'm like digging into my hands when i'm benching and i have like these marks on my hand at the end of the gym which you guys can't even see unless you're watching on youtube but it hurts and i'm very upset about it so my guy this was like i almost laughed out loud and cried at the same time but like normally even if i have if i'm getting a refill i can change the shape like if they're square they can reshape them to almond if they're almond i can cut them 
make them square. Like they can only reshape them for me when I'm getting a refill. Maybe that's not normal, but I've always done it. So I'm like, yeah, can we do like short almond? And he's like, and like shaking his head. Like yeah, he's like, mm, mm, mm. and I like not even like, no, that's not going to work because of this. Just kind of like, a, I don't really want to do that. And I yeah. Was like, no, I was that's like, what it is. Y- you know what? The square is fine. We can, I was like, or we can keep them the same and just make them shorter. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay. <laughs> and it just, it just was funny because nail salons, they boss you around in there. You know, what's funny. Actually, speaking of nails, the other day I had to get the, I had to get a copy and paste link of my account, like my Instagram account. So I just went on Google and typed in my name to get like the direct Instagram linked. And, you know, I started scrolling That's down. That's so bold of you. No, I, like, Reddit does not, like, make me sad anymore. It's actually embarrassing for the person posting it. And this one is embarrassing. Like, if you're the one that made this, like, thread, why? So I'm scrolling down, and I just see there's, like, a Reddit thread <laughs> of a screenshot of my nails that I posted one time about six months ago. And the caption is is someone gonna tell sam taylor she has legit fungus growing in her nail bed so fucking gross and the thread blew up it has like over a thousand likes and like a few hundred comments of just people like ripping my nails apart like literally like <laughs> so bad like what do you have does pe- do people have nothing better to do than no. just like crap on people for the smallest inconvenience but I'm just sitting there laughing because everyone thinks I have like this bacterial infection in my nail and like all this shit. But if they were up to date on my content, they would have known that literally a month before that photo, I stuck my hand in a blender and my entire nail bed got ripped in half and my fingernail fell off. So that's why my nail looked like that. And everyone's like, oh my God, she's so fucking nasty. Like she must like not wash her hands. Like all this shit, like all pissed. Why would you post it if like it was gross? Yeah, like, like it was just making your broken blender nail looking like the best it could be. Yeah. Like I was and trying. to be fair, you would always ask them, please don't put a nail on it. Oh, I never want a nail. And they're like, no, we can put a nail on that finger. I'm like, no, they were literally putting like a, <laughs> they were putting an acrylic tip on my skin. Like they were gluing it down onto my skin. And I was like. What do you? I, the first time they ever did it, I go, "Don't do it, please." And then I turn over and I look, and she's putting the glue on my skin and then a tip on my finger. I was like, "All right, this is where we're going." So yeah, um, basically there was just a whole Reddit thread about my bacteria infected finger, but in reality, I just stuck my finger in a blender because I'm dumb. But like, no, don't do it, please. <laughs> No, that's literally, I was like, no, no, no. They're like, she's like, no, 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 it's fine. It's going to look great. I was like, what? Like, I have no no nail there. It's skin. Nail salons literally boss you around. They do. They they, take control. They literally boss you around. It's like, wait, are you paying me to be here? Yeah. Or am I paying you? you, Like, can I do almond? No. Okay. (laughs) Okay. All right. Can I go shorter? No. All right. (laughs) Fine. Jesus. Please don't do this. No, I'm going to do it. Okay. And here's the thing. I will never fight <laughs> yeah no I, I won't i'm too scared to i did try a little bit like well i when they were doing asking that. you to like just being like can you cut my nail can you maybe try like this asking once i don't think that's fighting no no no. i'm talking about the other part when they were doing the, the french. french yeah so when they were doing the french he was using like the small like um brush like the really small one they use for designs and i'm like i've never seen anyone use that for french usually they do the they just paint on the white and then they use a bra like a acetone. a makeup brush with acetone on it and they just like do it real quick. So I knew I was gonna be sitting here for a really long time because he was using the tiny little brush. And I was like, fuck. Like I so I asked him, I was like, Can you do it? He goes, No. I was like, but please, like I the last time I was here, someone did that and it, it looked great. And he was like, No, 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 I don't do that. I'm like, come on, please. <laughs> like and I knew I was going to be sitting there for 45 minutes. No, it was honestly hilarious. Like, nail salons are just so funny. Yeah, they are. It's like, you know, um, I don't know if you know what this is. You know the nail salon, um, Angela, what's her name? I think her name is Angela. She did the nail salon thing and she did the Burger King. No, I have no idea. You don't know. You guys know what I'm talking about. And she goes, and it's her, like, and she's like, it's crooked. And the lady is like, <laughs> no, like, that's your finger. <laughs> 
or like no it's so funny if you guys know you some of you have to know what i'm talking about the nail salon scout show too when we're, when we're done my finger is so crooked it's like early 2000s like vibes like it's old um but one of you knows what i'm talking about that's just like really what our experience was in there look at how crooked it is yeah a little bit <laughs> oh and then the skit she's like can we do short and she's like that's why you don't have a boyfriend like because you're because na- you're getting your nails short <gasps> it's funny oh my god um, yeah it, it, our, we i don't think we're <laughs> i want an individual nail tech but all the ones that i find on instagram that i'm like this girl does so good she's so far from me like she's in austin but not close at all and it's like, like at that point you mm. might as well just go to a regular nail salon because you have to go out of your way to like yeah. you have to drive like 30 minutes just to go get I your know. nails done but um but, you know gotta <laughs> i'll figure it out um boy updates <laughs> oh yeah that's that i just everything on my list was covered yeah. so what do you have to say no, I don't even know if I want to say anything. Guys, I'm single as fuck. That's what I'll say. Basically, I went to the bar and like he was there and he gave me no attention at all. Like, no, nothing. So I'm over it. If you're not gonna if you're gonna be a guy, you need to be like one all over me and like claim claim your territory. And that wasn't hasn't been happening. So I'm over it. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. It was so lame to watch. It was horrible. I was like, we're going to the next bar. See you later. But I did see a cute guy at the gym today. So um, hopefully I see she him again. Did. He was very tall. Yeah, he was. Hopefully I see him again tomorrow. And if mm. I do. Slide in. Should I slide skirt, skirt. in? I commented. Oh, no, actually, I didn't comment on something. I made a TikTok and it was like at the guy. Like I added the guys and it has like half a million views. And it goes at men. If she makes eye contact with you more than two to three times at the gym she's into you and everyone in the comments is like thank you so much for this now i have my court case next week um just like funny ass comments and i was like you know what i said it in the comments i was like you know what guys girls the new wave is the girls going up to the guys fuck it we're gonna start going up to the guys as you should it's so scary and intimidating but if i do it will you guys do it and if you do do it please let me know how it goes it will, it will, we can all boost each other's um, confidence with it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So true. But um, that's about it. I have nothing else really to catch up on. I'm really excited to get into this episode. I am very excited too. We love Beth. She's like, like a mom. Like, yeah, like she's mom like a mom. Vibes. Um, we're going to go all into calorie deficits. Um, we're going to stop with this stupid nonsense that no one cares about and give you something important. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> we get straight to the point on every aspect. You guys asked a bunch of questions on the podcast Instagram. And if you're not following the podcast Instagram, do so now because we do a lot of polls for questions for you guys to ask to our guests. And we had a lot of questions and we had them be answered by Beth. Mm-hmm. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Yes, enjoy. All right, guys, we are here with Beth now. We are so excited to have her on. So Beth, if you wouldn't mind just kind of introducing yourself. Yeah. So hey, my name is Beth Wilkes Farocco, owner of Beth Farocco Fitness, and I'm a certified nutrition coach, strength coach, and mindset coach. Love that. So my question for you is, was this something you've always been super into and wanting to do as a career, or is this something that kind of took a t- like a change or has just always been something it's it's always been something so when i was let's see 18 19 years old i went to actually began college to uh, get certified in nutrition but um i quit um i was went to arizona and i actually moved to california and i was like i'm gonna live in san diego and live the beach life so i just quit college and i'm almost 50 now so uh everything comes around full circle so i got back into it when i quit drinking seven years ago Mm. And that's how I got back, uh, yeah, many years after. Yeah, so if anybody doesn't follow Beth on TikTok, I definitely recommend doing so. That's how I found her, and I loved her attitude. I loved her just getting straight to the point with pretty much everything, and that's why I'm excited with this episode today to kind of talk to her and ask her questions all about calorie deficits. On our um, podcast Instagram, I actually put a poll up, and I asked our audience to kind of leave some questions for you about calorie deficits. Mm-hmm. And let me just say... The questions were very, very complicated to the point where they, oh, should, be, they should not be complicated. Yeah, not at so all. So we're excited to kind of just digest all of this and show people how easy it actually is to lose weight. Yeah. So my first question for you to kind of start this off, because some people listening are probably gonna be like, what in the hell is a calorie deficit? If you want to take the lead with that, let us know. 
Yeah, so what is a calorie deficit, right? Uh, the number one <laughs> question. It's so what is a calorie? A calorie is a unit of measurement. It's energy. Mm -hmm. So a calorie deficit is taking in less calories, which is energy from food, than your body needs to maintain its current weight. So if you're eating too many calories, energy, you're going to gain. If you're eating less calories and you need to maintain, you're going to lose. And if you're eating the like, same calories as your you know, body weight, then you maintain. Um, so to put it simply, I like to put this analogy is like, okay, so example, if you're eating the same meals every week, no one does this, but just for an example, mm -hmm. um, and you have like your part of your meals or it's like two regular Mountain Dews a day, mm -hmm. you take those two Mountain Dews, that's like what, 300 calories out and you swap them for zero calorie drinks, you're basically putting yourself in a 300 calorie deficit. Yeah. So if you, all you ate is the same fucking thing and then you took out those two sodas you're eating less calories already. So people like they overcomplicate it, you know, obviously, um, mm -hmm. to try to cut out a million different things when it really comes down to like, you know, your portions. Yeah, I know. So one thing you're really big on, because I know you talk about yo-yo dieting a lot on your TikTok and everything like that. We're kind of breaking away from the yo-yo dieting and trying to explain to people that all you really need to be is in a calorie deficit. Now, mm -hmm. um, my question for you is who should be in a calorie deficit? And I kind of put it in like parentheses, who is physically ready and who is mentally ready to be in a calorie deficit? Yeah. So, if, yeah, this is a, a, a very broad, like, you know, know. It, it really depends. So if you've been dieting for a very long time and that's all you've been doing, yo-yo, you know, I think it's important to maybe rethink, um, reevaluate actually going into a calorie deficit and really maybe finding your maintenance and stop dieting for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's, you know, if you're severely overweight, you know, obviously that for your health, it would be, you know, helpful to get into a calorie deficit, but also finding, like, I think it's important to everyone needs to find their maintenance um, first. So what is that, right? Um, and go from there. Yeah. But if you've been yo-yo dieting, if you are have an eating disorder, I don't suggest being in a calorie deficit. Um, you know, me being mentally ready. I don't know if a lot of people really are mentally ready. Some are, like maybe me or you that have been in this business. We know what to do, right? But there's some people that just they need to work on their mindset during the calorie deficit as well because it's kind of combined yeah of course now kind of going back on how our listeners asked us some questions a very common one was before you enter a calorie deficit how do you find your maintenance or mm. where do my maintenance lie so if you could kind of answer that question yeah so i think it's important like all my clients when they first start out i just have them start tracking their calories we don't even figure out a number yet let's just see where you're at because mm -hmm. a lot of people just don't even know where their maintenance is so have them track you know hopefully they're weighing and measuring their food so you know i don't want to give them no calorie goal just put i don't care just add put whatever you are eating in the app um and then you know monitor your weight for that couple of weeks and if it's you know staying the same obviously then you're in maintenance you found your maintenance if it, you're losing then you're still you're actually in a calorie deficit or you know if your weight's going up then you're possibly in a surplus so i think it's important to track um and find it that way and also you know you can go on um any app or uh, website like if it fits in your macros or tdee calculator.net and you can find an estimated maintenance there um, as well. And remember, everything is always an estimate. It's not like set in stone unless you are really tracking for a certain amount of time and you are be able to find it that way. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely what we like encourage people to do. And I think sometimes it frustrates people because, yeah, the calculators are a great estimate because if you have no idea what you're doing and let's say you track and it's 2000 calories being like, mm -hmm. is that even remotely close to maybe what it should be? I think a calculator is very useful and you can compare like, okay, that's yeah. what it should be. That's what I'm eating. That makes sense. But I think people get frustrated when we say like, you can't just get a perfect number right off the bat and it might take yeah. one, two weeks of tracking and they just want to already start doing something, mm -hmm. but you need to take yeah. that first like one, two weeks, few days, whatever it is of tracking and finding a maintenance. And I think that's frustrating to people. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Because, you... I mean, everyone wants things quick. Yes. So, but <laughs> to do it the right way, you got to do this shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know you just said how you uh, think that everyone should be tracking everything that they are consuming into the app. Are there anything that someone is eating that you would tell them not to track? In the beginning, track everything. 
Okay. Yeah. Even like, yeah, like- I mean, think of it like people are like, do I track my fruits and veggies? It's like, yeah, yeah if you've never have, you probably should. Cause an apple, I mean, think about it. A honey crisp apples, like 80 to hundred calories. You're having one of those a day. That's that adds up. Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I, people, we like don't really, tra- well, like we're not tracking right now, but when we did, we didn't really track our like green vegetables. Mm. Yeah. But I never understood not tracking fruit. Yeah. Neither did right. I. Like maybe not like weighing it. Like, you know, like I would maybe average just put in like one medium apple, right? Because yes. I'm not like on prep. Like that's fine. Right, <laughs> like, right. I mean, like like lettuce and spinach and shit. I mean, that shit, it's like it doesn't weigh anything. I mean, obviously that, but in the beginning, just for people to know, then I'm like, you know, don't worry about the lettuce and stuff. That's, I mean, you're going to get really crazy if you start trying to measure that. Yeah, I think it is good practice though to put everything in just to like practice yeah. and see. yeah. Now, I know there are going to be some people out there that are listening and they're like, oh, well, I don't really have the time for this. Tracking seems like a lot of work. I feel like I'm like maybe in a good mental state where they can be in a calorie deficit, but they also don't really want to be so fixated on numbers. What are some things that you would give for a client or anyone listening to be in a calorie deficit without tracking? Um, without tracking. So is this for someone that has like never tracked before or they're like, I'm too busy or, or I'm for me, busy. it's like, okay. If you have an eating disorder and the, maybe tracking may, ha- or you have had it, got one from tracking, but you, cause we don't work with people with e- like full blown eating disorders yeah. and they shouldn't be in a calorie deficit anyway. But some people, like you said, shouldn't, or just don't want to track. But I think that that's like the last resort, honestly, because if you, re- if you have a goal and you want to, you know, achieve that goal and you want to make sure that you're actually in a deficit without the fucking guessing all the time. Um, you know, tracking is the way to go, but obviously there's, you know, the people that can't and that's okay. So I like the three plates, two snacks method. Yeah. I saw this. You posted this on your TikTok. I believe I saw that. Yeah. So I learned this from Jordan Syatt. Um, so half your plate should be veggies, a quarter plate of protein and the rest is carbs and fats. Um, then, you know, you would swap out high calorie drinks for zero calorie drinks make sure that your snacks are protein, fruit, or veggie. Um, if you're drinking alcohol, like one drink um, would swap out one snack, two drinks would swap out the other snack. And then if you're drinking more than that, then fuck it mm-hmm. <laughs> at that point, you know? Yeah. No, that is good, simple, and kind of like straight to the yeah, point, very which I simple. like. It is very simple. Yeah. I think, But people, people overcomplicate that too. <laughs> yes. Oh, I bet. Yeah, I and imagine. I think another... Uh, <laughs> Another take to not tracking is like maybe tracking a bit less, like maybe tracking full blown macros isn't for you. You just do calories like Uh my dad recently is big into like weight loss, lost a bunch of weight, just doing calories like none of the macro stuff, simply hitting a calorie goal and like exercising. My sister wants to get into tracking food. She's like she works full time job. She has two toddlers like it's it's a lot. So I was like, just do like and she's also trying to get like stronger. I'm like, just do calories and protein. Yeah. Like you don't like I think people think they need to do like yeah. it all or like whatever. Like you can customize the approach. Yeah. So that Absolutely. it like fits your lifestyle better. Cause I mean, like what I just said, like if you're not on like competition prep, it like doesn't really fucking matter. Like it exactly doesn't. how much fat you're eating. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I most of my clients when they start only track calories and protein and mm-hmm. fiber because that make then I, I'm making sure they're getting enough vegetables. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's well that's another I think good point of why maybe tracking vegetables could be important cuz you can track other things besides macros and calories. Like I used to cuz I eat plant-based and when I was first mm-hmm. starting eating plant-based, I tracked every vegetable. Because I would look at my micronutrient intake because yep. I wasn't sure if I was eating enough of the right thing since I was like following a new yeah. diet. So that's actually why I would track like literally everything to see my like my micronutrient intake. Yeah. Yep. Now, and that's what I try to tell people when they're they're apprehensive about tracking. It's like, don't think of it as like restrictive. Think of it as like you're actually getting enough. Mm-hmm. um, food, you're getting enough calories, you're getting enough protein, you're getting enough micronutrients. Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's honestly where both Taylor and I kind of came from. We both came from a very like restrictive under eating point in our lives. So when we did start to track in a healthier way, because obviously before we were doing it in, in not the healthiest way, it kind of helped us understand that like the more food we had and like the better relationship we had with food and like creating meals and being more protein focused and all that that's where tracking macros definitely helped us Mm -hmm. and it did yeah it still helps me eat enough like this summer uh we both haven't been tracking and I've been very focused on like just kind of the quality of my food and trying to Mm -hmm. eat just like 
more nutritious without really focusing on the numbers. And I have noticed like I have lost a bit of weight. I'm not really trying to. I don't really care. Like it wasn't a focus. But like mm-hmm. I definitely have. Like I'm a little more like shredded down just because when I don't track, I do eat less because tracking tends to help me like eat enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like and more. tracking is. And like you said, like tracking is not forever, you know, but it's important to it. Like it's a learning. It's data. I like what you just said about like tracking and tracking. People will track forever. The golden question a lot of people also ask is how long should someone stay in a calorie deficit? I had one individual say that they had been in a calorie deficit for over a year now and they have stopped oh seeing weight loss. So yeah. give your intake on how long someone should be in a calorie deficit and maybe even some insight on what to do when they've been in one for way too long. Okay. Um, good question. So I think it's it also, it depends, right? I think if the more weight you have to lose, if you're a larger person, then you can probably be in a deficit longer, like a, a moderate one, not mm-hmm. obviously like really um, strict one. And if you have not that much weight to lose, you probably shouldn't be in it for too long. I'd say um, anywhere from like eight to 12, maybe 16 weeks max. Um, but a larger person can, you know, it depends. I think you have to look at the signs of when to get the fuck out of the deficit. If you are like your sleep is shit. Um, if you're, if you're starting to feel really stressed and really hungry and irritated, your um, you know, your gym, you're really weak in the gym. It's probably time to like get out of that deficit and give your body a break. Yeah. And I think it's important to note, like the difference between like, someone coming from a place of being like more overweight where weight loss is something that's going to be kind of like a constant deficit for a while to get back to a healthy weight and someone that's looking in the mirror just saying like oh I need to lose five pounds and I think yeah I think that's the people that overcomplicated a lot because if you're just looking in the mirror like oh I think I need to lose five pounds like I feel a bit bloated you probably don't even need to go in a calorie deficit maybe just like train train (laughs) weight train walk a little more like maybe swap out some foods like maybe you're Mm kind of like eating kind of shitty things like you and and those are the people that overcomplicated the most i feel just like nitpicking Mm -hmm. themselves apart and not people that actually have like real weight loss goals right it could be like more of a body dysmorphia type thing yeah Mm -hmm. now someone who has been in that calorie deficit for a while now what would you advise them to do I would say take a diet break for sure. Mm-hmm. Like get out of that deficit and go into maintenance because maintenance is ultimately where you want to be. It's per, it's it's a good thing to practice that. Yeah. So for anyone kind of listening that maybe won't be too sure on what you mean by that, obviously we would reverse diet up to maintenance, correct? Yeah, I would, you know, have either go right to maintenance or reverse diet because people freak out about the scale because mm-hmm. if you start adding a you know, two, 300 calories, you're going to see that scale jump. And a lot of people are afraid of that. So take it slow, add like 50 to hundred calories a day each week to your mate, your weight, like maintains between the same three to five pounds. And what people don't realize is that usually your end diet weight is not going to be your maintenance weight. You will put on a few pounds. That does not mean it's fat. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the times too, people, cause Taylor and I have within this last year gone through a bulk process and then we Mm -hmm. maintained for a little bit, went into a calorie deficit and now we're just enjoying the summer intuitive eating and not tracking. Um, But I think a lot of the times people get a little, because I at least noticed this in my DMs, very fixated on the number on the scale when they're Mm. leaving that deficit or maintenance or whatnot and they don't realize that it's actually just water retention and their, their weight is not necessarily like body fat. It's just right. retention of water for maybe all the extra food, the less food you had, whatever it is. So the little jumps in the scale is not something anyone should ever get super. I have another point to yeah, add to that. Because what you said um, that I wanted to point out, how weight staying between the same three to five pounds is staying the same. Like that's like a your coaches, like, a do- like probably like your doctor, like whoever would count that as it's pretty level, three mm-hmm. to five pounds. And a lot of people think three to five pounds is so, so much. And it's like, you could just like need to go to the bathroom. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, exactly. it's not. And I think that that's good to know. Cause a lot of people might think like three to five pounds, like maybe they think like the same or like one pound is what people mean by fluctuate, but like it could be a whole five pounds, which yeah, seems like yeah. a lot to someone. Like obviously once you're comfortable with it, it's whatever, yeah. but like you literally could just need to like, 
go to the bathroom or like you had too much salt last night. Like it's not. Oh, totally. <laughs> People focus. So you, they have to focus, stop focusing so much on the scale. It drives me insane. Mm-hmm. Although, you know, I get it because I, I do the same thing sometimes. I, and I'm a fucking coach and I have a coach and she sets me straight because right. I'm like gaining muscle right now. And it's a mind fuck, the scale. Um, but if you are taking photos and you're taking measurements and you're looking at the other data, then you can, you know, take the emotion out of it and become a scientist about your own data. Yes, Mm -hmm. of course. Now I was stalking your TikTok, of course, before this, and I saw a response to a comment. It was like months ago, but I kind of Mm like the concept of it. And my question now is what would you tell or ask a client that has been in a calorie deficit for a few weeks or months now and isn't seeing quick results on the scale? Ooh, um, that they're not being patient enough, <laughs> A, yes. um, and that they look at the other data. Like, are you losing inches? Are you um, getting stronger in the gym? Are your clothes fitting better? Um, I would take a look at that because like you said, like the scale, here we go again, right? It's mm-hmm. always, it comes back to that. Stop focusing on that. It, it, it literally takes people out. It does. It really does. I think people, another thing like with the question box that I was getting is like, it was very much centered around this with the scale and yeah. another kind of like pinpoint on this topic is like making sure they're tracking absolutely everything. Now, are they going mm-hmm. out on the weekends and going stir crazy because they were tracking Monday to Friday and then on the weekends, maybe they were off completely. So there are just so many factors to consider when you are in a weight loss journey. Oh yeah. A lot of people just aren't consistent. They don't track their consistency. It's important to track your consistency too. Cause yeah. you can, you know, think that you're uh, perfect with your calories, but you, you literally don't track when you go out to a restaurant, which is like three times a week. Um, you know, you don't track your alcohol on the weekend or, you know, so you're just not, you're in a diet mindset, but you're ever not, not ever actually in the deficit the whole time. So yeah, that's what I was not- going to say. A lot of people with, um, the thought of like, but I tried a calorie deficit for months and didn't lose weight. Then you weren't in one. Like no. it's as, it's as, it's as simple as that. Then you were not in one or people. I was listening to this podcast and they had a guest on, um, not like a fitness person, but she just made a comment about her current diet that she was doing. Uh, like I think it was like carnivore one meal a day and calorie deficit. And I'm like <laughs> to lose weight. And I'm like, so the only thing that's helping is the calorie deficit. And it's, it's just right. so frustrating seeing people still like talk about yeah. that. Cause she was saying when she was eating a lot of fruit, the calorie deficit didn't work. Oh God. <laughs> it, it's like, it's like, it's like when people say I've been eating 1200 calories and I'm not losing fat. I'm like, you're not eating 1200 fucking calories. Yeah. I can guarantee you're not eating. Maybe you're eating 1200 calories Monday through Thursday and Friday, Saturday and Sunday, you're fucking eating 4,000 a day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then Monday you're going back to 1200. So you're really not eating 1200 calories a day. You just think you are, or, yeah. or, you know, I had another listener ask a question and she had asked what to do if you've plateaued with weight loss, but still have weight to lose and your calories are very low. Mm. First off, I would say that you're probably not in a plateau or in a calorie deficit. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, ex- kind of, explain um, if, a little bit. if you're cal- I mean, this is also an, it depends. I mean, uh, I think honestly, it's, it doesn't happen very often that someone um, is eating at a low, low calories and their body has adapted to those calories. That's yeah. honestly, I don't run into that very often at all. Most of the time it's, they don't realize that they're not actually eating that low. Okay. So would you mind explaining so, on that a little bit? Um, like we just said about the 1200 calories, people, you know, I've been eating 1200 calories and I'm not losing any weight. Yeah. It's th- then, you know, I'm plateauing. It's like, no, you're really, you're just not in a deficit. Yeah. Um, and also plateauing is normal. If you're not losing weight on the scale, but maybe you're losing inches, of everything you think you're plateauing. So they're basing all of their, da- their um, progress on the scale. Mm-hmm. The scale's not moving for a few weeks, but maybe they're losing inches. They think they've plateaued. Yeah. Yeah, especially with weight training, that's another thing to consider as well. If Mm -hmm. someone has, you know, is coming from a very big weight loss journey and they are losing the weight, but they're also weight training, but they're also putting on muscle, that scale is not going to be moving down as quickly as they would expect it because, like I just said, they're putting on muscle as well. I think it's also common, especially for girls, to get really dramatic really fast. Like, let's say you've been in a really good (laughs) weight loss journey 
And then it's mm-hmm. like around the time of like your period. And for two weeks or a week and a half or a week yeah. or whatever it is for you, you're bloated. And you're like sending DMs to this question box we put or whatever. Like I had a plateau, like I have an end calorie deficit and it's not working for that week. And then it like goes away. And maybe the next week they're like, oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, Just I'm be patient good. a little bit. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and it, if you don't have a lot of body fat to lose, you know, you, you may think that you're plateauing. Um, as well, because it's hard to lose those last, whatever, five, 10 uh, pounds. It's, it takes super consistent, you, consistent here and, and a lot of fucking patience. Well, and most of the time, cause... sorry, I thought you were done. I was going to say most, most of the time that, you know, you are losing inches and your body's recomping mm-hmm. at that point. So yeah, what were you yeah I was going to say most people also, those last five to 10 pounds are probably necessary for like health. Yeah. Right. Like, like a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. I think people are yeah. comparing to like a bikini bodybuilders competitor. or something. Yeah. And yeah, it's like you, exactly. you actually do, do need those five pounds. Yeah. Or else you're going to lose your period or something. Yeah. I feel like everything we've kind of been just saying has obviously been, well, maybe you're not in a calorie deficit in terms of like weight loss. So kind of want to move over to the fitness mints because mm-hmm. those get me heated. I know I'm sure they definitely get you heated, but what are your top three fitness myths that you've seen that you absolutely hate the most? Uh, since we're on the subject of calorie deficit, yeah, <laughs> I figured I'd say, you know, okay, carbs make you fat. That drives me fucking nuts. Drives yeah. me nuts. Drives me crazy. Sugar, sugar makes you fat and fruit makes you fat. That I mean, that is fruit. Like who's, who's going overboard on fucking strawberries and apples? Yeah. No, no, you know, uh, I hate it. someone once posted this thing. Um, thank God the creator has like kind of stopped this like lifestyle of posting this stuff. Like she's way more like healthy now, which is great. But back in the day, it used to be like um, that she'd only do like fruit like in the morning and like you shouldn't eat like carbs after a certain time of night. And I like mm. I was terrified, terrified that after I had my fruit in my breakfast, which was like correct, that like as a snack midday, that that was bad. That's crazy, right? And it's like, I mean, I like, like that I'd rather go for like chips as a snack because someone told me f- fruit is bad. Right? Or like I've had clients that are afraid to eat bananas and like someone that I had someone that hadn't had a potato in like a year. A fucking yeah. potato is like the most, uh, it's low in calories and they're very uh, satisfying and they mm-hmm. fill you up and you know, it's insane. Potatoes are the, this is a fun fact that I learned in history class. That is like my number one, like carbs are bad, like rebuttal. <laughs> that uh-huh. potatoes are the only food that you could like, if you had to eat one food for like the rest of your life and no other food, if you only ate potatoes, you'd be like pretty healthy because they're full of like so many nutrients. Yeah. That like only eating potatoes, you would like perfectly survive and like be good. Noted. Potatoes and so are when people fucking say, amazing. When people say they're bad, I'm like, no, they're like actually the most nutritious, I think. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I have another yeah. question because it kind of just came to mind. What do you do? Because I'm sure you have so many clients that come to you with fear foods. What do you do to kind of help them get out of that fear of that specific food, whether it's a banana, mac and cheese, whatever it is? Um, I have them start to incorporate it in their, yeah. in their diet. Like, you know, slow, let's slowly, let's add this first fear food in and track it, um, you know, and go from there. Yeah. It, it usually works because, you know, they're tracking their calories and they're like, oh, I can actually eat a banana and it's fine. I'm like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I used to do um, online training this time last year. And that was one thing that I really did with a lot of my girls is I would make them create a fear foods list on their phones and each week conquer a new one and it helped tremendously with them Mm -hmm. overcoming that I had this one client which I still keep in touch with her quite a bit Oreos was her biggest thing and she ate a few Oreos one day and she was just like oh my goodness I cannot believe that like I could eat these Oreos and there was absolutely no effect on my body no effect on like my progress with my calorie deficit and I could put it into my macros and eat this because anyone or at least her or I when I had fear foods would always think that it would completely mess up my progress Mm -hmm. yeah and it's you know it's mind-blowing it really is yeah that the the fear but I I mean I get it I used to be that I used to be that person too yeah um there's a lot of bullshit information out there 
yeah it's yeah. crazy i think a lot of it too is the fear of not being in like control around the food because mm-hmm. that was it with me i realized um like i feel like i never thought i had fear foods but then i realized no i actually did have foods that i thought like like i couldn't have near me or in the house because i would just like uncontrollably like eat them and i think that was my version of like fear mm-hmm. foods yeah yeah and then the thing is like when you restrict it you want it more Mm-hmm. so you're you're restricting it and then you're binging on it and then you're saying it's like complete it's like a cycle back and forth yeah exactly so if you actually include it you're it's not going to be that important to you yeah. you don't have that food on a pedestal anymore yeah. so you're most likely going to be able to moderate it mm-hmm. yeah i think everyone thinks that they're above the binge restrict cycle that like they are tough enough and they are disciplined enough and mm. i don't think anyone really is yeah i want to yeah. ask one more question before we wrap things up and that is kind of another question in regards to like a client or a listener listening what is some advice you would give for them if they were in their yo-yo cycling at the moment and you wanted to kind of help them break out of that like the yo-yo dieting yeah they were just constantly hopping from different things well if it think about this this way if it nothing works or if if you keep having to do something over and over like obviously it's not working. Right. Mm. So why not do it the right way? So you actually don't have to keep doing this shit over and over again. Yeah. Simple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, love it. yeah, it's, it all, it's really simple, right? It really is simple. And it honestly, like, it makes me so sad because I used to be the same exact way when I would think about like weight loss, gaining weight, whatever it was. Like I always used to think it was so overcomplicated. So when I did see like a bunch of those questions in our question box, like, I just remember I used to be the one thinking yeah. or asking those questions and it just makes me sad. So I'm happy that we were able to kind of have this conversation yeah. today and show how simple it actually yeah, is. Yeah. And I think it's funny yeah. because a lot of the times when this is like such a common ass question, like when people like ask us, like, can you do a podcast all about calorie deficit? It's almost we're like, there's, there's really not that much to say. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like I think people expect this, like, I mean, we talked for 30 minutes, but I think people expect this, like, complicated answer. So, like, something you really need to listen to and, like, really sit down and talk about. It's like, there's really not much to say. It's like, it's so simple. People don't want to fucking believe it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, no, you really just, you know, uh, eat your fruits and veggies, your whole grains, your protein, go walking, strength train, sleep, get some water, drink some water. And they're like, no, there must be some other way. No, it's actually, you just have to do those things consistently. Yeah. Forever. It's kind of like social media has manipulated it to make it seem like that simple way is the complicated way. And if I just right. had apple cider, cider vinegar shots every morning, that's how I would lose my weight because that yeah. seems simpler than having to do all the tracking and all the exercise. Mm-hmm. Right. So, because I, I mean, so yeah, calorie deficit, the, the mechanism about it is easy, but doesn't mean like getting into it is, is, is easy yeah. Because, yeah. because of all, all this other stuff, right? Exactly. The freaking yeah. stress, the, the emotional eating, the freaking um, no support at home, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, the list can go on. And yeah. then the fact that a lot of people just can't be consistent. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. If you want to kind of just plug your Instagram real quick and in whatever else. Yeah. And your podcast. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram as Beth Brocco Fitness. I'm on TikTok as Beth Brocco Fitness. And I have a podcast called Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt. That's on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google, wherever a, a podcast is, basically. And Love that. Amazing. For coaching, you can reach out to me at BethBroccoFitness.com. Perfect. Well, Amazing. thank you so much for coming on. We were so happy thank to you have guys. you on. Thank you, guys. I'll have to have you guys on my podcast. Of course. Yes. We would love that. <laughs> I'd be awesome. I will, I will, will actually reach out to you and give you some dates and we can just book it up. Perfect. Yes. Sounds let's good to book us. it. Yeah. Let's I'm ready. book it. Let's All book right, it. Beth. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank You're you. You're welcome, guys. Have Bye. a great day. Bye. Bye.